I remember when I was 17 and a woman asked me, are you saved? I didn't have any idea what she meant. I was like, saved? What the heck is saved? The best thing I could think through was maybe she means, am I like my grandmother? And um, I adamantly told her no, because <laughs> I'm not like my grandmother. I do hip hop music. It's more than music, it's actually culture. It's the lens by which you see the world. They talking reckless, what you expecting from the walking dead. Man, it's okay to be bold, passionate. It's masculinity, that's what I do. <laughs> I used to sneak and watch rap videos in my grandmother's house, because I was too little. She wouldn't have let me watch them. And I would sit there and watch them, and I would just marvel. Late at night, I found people to look up to. There were no uh, Barack Obamas, there were no Martin Luther Kings and Malcolm X's, they'd all passed away, and so I had Tupac. I've been trapped since birth. Cautious, cause I'm cursed. The fantasies of my family in a hearse. And they say it's the white man I should fear. But it's my own kind doing all the killing here. I wasn't a, the greatest athlete. Definitely wasn't a scholarly student. I wasn't the toughest guy. Um, but being able to rap was my source of significance. I grew up wrestling with significance because my, my father and my mother weren't together. Um, never met my father. He uh, became a drug addict and kind of let his life crumble. I felt like my dad was this piece of my life that I needed to have to feel like I was somebody. Having a single mother who worked a lot, you know, she just had to entrust me in the care of family members and different people a lot of times. I experienced abuse as a kid. I experienced neglect and, and uh, you know, different kind of things. And so I was just wanting real significance and I didn't feel like I was gonna get it trying to be uh, this manicured, good, all around student in person. The people I looked up to were gangsters. You know, my uncle, I remember him, you know, showing me a gun and I just wanted to be like those guys. So I took a, a BB gun and stood in the middle of the street and pointed it at a car. And, um, and just saw the lady panic and freak out. And for me, that was just fun. I, I just I didn't have anything to do. I wanted to be back in the inner city. I wanted to be, you know, doing criminal activity. So I just kept rebelling and I, I kept doing worse in drugs, 16, fighting all the time. Got arrested in high school for stealing. He was just like, man, what are you, what are you gonna do with your life? Got put on a gang list. I remember thinking like, man, I guess I, I, I'm supposed to care from drugs to drinking to I'm a wreck, partying to I don't fit anywhere. I'm just this misfit of a person. My mother was like, you just need to read your Bible. And I remember ripping the pages out of the Bible and throwing it on the floor and I said, I don't want this Bible. I just couldn't wrap my hands around this being true, this being real. My grandmother was a Christian. You know, I would have to go to church with her. It was it was like older people, it was old people. So for me, church wasn't about God and church was for them, it wasn't for me. It's probably not real, probably just something people use as a crutch. I think as the emptiness started to, to get more profound, when I had to drink more, smoke more, find another woman, another woman, another woman. I was really, really, really in a dark place. 5.46 in the morning, tossing and turning, chest burning. Sermons in my head keep reoccurring. Having visions in my head of a kid crying at the feet of the father for all the wrong things that he did. Now I'm sweating in my sheets, can't sleep because my mind keep telling me I'm six feet deep. Don't remind me, even though I'm still alive, I can't tell. The way I'm living my life, I feel I'm going to hell. Um, I got invited by a friend to a conference. And, uh, you know, I'm really just more excited about being in a big city. I'm more excited about there being girls. I'm more excited about just what the city brings. I'm not really concerned about the conference. So I get to the conference and um, I see, like, I see guys who have been shot from being in gangs. I see, you know, girls who were extremely promiscuous in the past. I see rappers, I see dancers, I see singers, 
I see people who came from the same background I came from, um, and they still embodied who they were culturally, but they were all in love with Jesus, and I'd never seen that before. And then I saw another group, and they, they were sold out for Jesus, and they were rapping, and, and you heard about it in their songs, and I was just like, what in the world? And as I listened to the lyrics, I was like, man, I don't know this. I don't understand this God, this God they're talking about. And then finally, uh, someone got up and said, do you know you've been bought with a price? And he told me the story of Jesus on Golgotha and, and him carrying the cross and him uh, bearing all of my sin, all of my lying, all of my cheating, all of my... My, my escapades, all of my drinking and drugging and put it on his own back. And he said, I was bought with the price. And it made me think, man, I'm, like, somebody thinks I'm significant enough to die for me. Somebody thinks I'm significant enough to climb up this mountain with this cross on his back and take nails in his wrists and his feet for me. I remember articulating like, God, get me out of this, just don't kill me. Do whatever you gotta do to get me out of this, just don't kill me. I was driving down the highway and I turned too quick and lost control of the wheel. My car flipped over again and again, the roof caved in, windshield caved in, no seat belt, glass everywhere. My glasses that I had on were molded like kind of into the frame of the car and uh, and I didn't have a scratch. That was it. <laughs> I said, I get it. Called up my friends who I knew were living for Jesus and I said, we gotta make this happen. Um, I'm coming home. I saw change happening. I spent a lot of time searching for father figures. I just saw the evidence. And God has shown me that, you know, ultimately he's my father. It drives me to, to keep pressing. I started volunteering at a juvenile detention center. And some of those songs that I had written in my darkest of times when I was crying out to God, I would do for him. And you just see him sitting there weeping. And time after time, they keep requesting it. Can you do that song again? Can you do that song again? I just need that to hold on to. I need something that's gonna remind me that I need Jesus. It hit me like, this is what I wanna do. I wanna use music to, to offer hope and encouragement to people. I was created by God, but I didn't wanna be like him. I wanna be him, the Jack Sparrow of my Caribbean. I remember the first created being and how he shifted the blame on his dame for fruit he shouldn't have eaten. And now look at us all out of Eden, wearing designer fig leaves by Louis Vuitton, make believing. But God sees through my foolish pride, and that I'm weak like Adam, another victim of Lucifer's lies. But then in steps Jesus. All men were created to lead, but we needed somebody to lead us, more than a teacher, but somebody to buy us back from the darkness. You could say he redeemed us. I've learned to stay close to my source of significance, to my source of worth, and uh, that's God. My name is Lecrae, and I am second.